It's safe to say few of us have ever watched a colleague die in our arms, let alone fighting for your own life. Mortar blasts and bullets a deadly constant. But one young army captain did. He found that place in history and membership in a very exclusive club 50 years ago to this very day. The Battle of Nam Dong. 2.26 a.m. and a 30-year-old's world is about to explode. Literally. Mortar round hit the roof. Threw that thing apart and that started it. Started a fierce five-hour battle for survival. Captain Roger Donlan's Camp Nam Dong ambushed by the enemy. His men outnumbered three to one. And it got a little hectic. But then hectic fit the life of a World War I veteran son who grew up in small town New York with 10 siblings driven to serve. I saw my oldest brother go off to World War II and the next oldest went off to there and the rest of us were waiting in the wings. Waiting his turn by playing soldier in his father's old uniforms. That turn came in the army, but then he left for civilian life. That life didn't last. I had the, the ache to go back and be in uniform and be serving, be where the action was. Donlan re-enlisted, and in 1964, the action that changed his life forever. In the fog of war, Donlan moved quickly, in spite of wounds from that opening salvo and limited contact with headquarters. One and only one message got out. Had that not gotten out, I wouldn't be sharing the story with you. No one would have survived that night. Help was hours away as the battle raged on. Bleeding and exhausted, the young captain scurried from position to position, dodging bullets, shrapnel, the enemy. Suddenly, another mortar blew Donlan off his feet as he tried to rescue his gravely wounded sergeant out of a mortar pit. Was there ever a point that you thought, we're not going to get out of here, I'm not, I'm not going to make it? Yeah, when I was picking up Pop Alamo, when we got blasted back in that mortar, I thought that was it. He died in your arms. Yeah. Pop Alamo and John Houston, two of his 11 men, gone, killed in action. Both having just learned their wives back home were pregnant. And that's all I could think of when I got word that John was killed. That why, why John, why not me? But, uh, Yeah, she gave premature birth to the twins when she got news that John was killed. And John Houston Jr. is buried in Arlington with his father. As dawn approached and the battle raged, Donlan suffered two more wounds and the camp's casualty count climbed. Finally, Marine reinforcements arrived. And as the sun rose, the Battle of Nam Dong ended amazingly, the enemy vanquished. Well, we never thought about quitting. Word of Captain Donlan's bravery spread among his hospital visitors, war commanding General William Westmoreland. Even as he healed, Donlan returned to the scene of the firefight, marveling at how his outnumbered camp held off the Viet Cong. I try not to think too much about the battle itself, but the results and what people have done with their lives after the battle. Just five months after the battle, another date with history. President Johnson awards a humbled Captain Donlan the first Vietnam Medal of Honor. The only remark I said to him is this, this is not just for me, it's for the entire team. The medal came swiftly to Donlan, being at peace, did not. It would take nearly two decades, Donlan eventually returning to Vietnam and actually met the enemy, the man who had planned the attack on Nam Dong. It was, it was tough to reach out the first time to shake hands. But once you shook hands and looked him in the eye, you saw another warrior. Warriors who, while not friends, shared a mutual respect and stories. And when on the same visit, the now Colonel Donlan traveled back to Nam Dong itself to restore an overgrown cemetery of Vietnamese battle victims, that moment of peace. As we left the hill, that's when my reconciliation clock got ticking. And I said, well, the next job at hand is to heal the wounds of war. That next job would eventually lead him to Leavenworth. Well, now I'm because of my war room. The post-military town he and his wife of 48 years call home. A friendly place to continue that reconciliation and retirement. Fundraising and building Vietnam schools named in memory of his fallen men. All killed in action here. Now, rebuilding the bridges of understanding between countries and cultures and generations through education. 
Do you think about him often? Every day. And he thinks of today's warriors. Three of his boys have served every chance he gets. It would be my opportunity to thank the now generation, as I call them, for all their service and sacrifice. And God knows they're still sacrificing. 10 of 12 members in Colonel Donlan's Special Forces Unit survived that battle. Five remain alive today. Last week, the Colonel joined three of them as they gathered in Florida to commemorate the battle's 50th anniversary. They were joined by the late John Houston's surviving twin son, George. All together again, as the Army unveiled a new surprise name for the 7th Special Forces Group Headquarters, Donlan Hall. John Holt, Fox 4 News, working for you.